Hey everybody, hope you're all doing well. So in this episode of the EGP Lean Tech Tuesday, I decided we'd do something slightly different. So in a couple of minutes, we're going to be joining the Accurix team as they debut their changes to Accurix Chain, which is the text messaging system many of us use in practice, as well as their plans for the online consultation model. I have some other things planned for today, but since this came up as something that's going to be coming out, I thought it'd be worth that we cover this. So I'm going to watch this live with you. You can see my reactions, hear my thoughts as we hear them talk about things. Apologies, uh, they shouldn't breach any weird, you know, copyright or anything like that kind of stuff. But I thought it'd be an interesting experiment to do so you can see what I'm seeing as well as the same thing. I'm kind of keen to see what they're producing for primary care. So shall we see if it's up and ready? Let's take a little look. Uh, so we're just about to start, I think. Um, any minute now. So yeah, yeah, it says we're waiting. Let's have a little look, shall we? So you can now see my screen. I can see what you're going to see. I'll make it bigger when it hangs up. Hope you've all had a great day in practice anyway. Uh, I'm going to be listening through my headset. Hopefully this shouldn't cause any feedback for people. Um, whilst waiting, more than happy to share. Obviously, done loads of really interesting videos for Accurate in terms of how practice can use it, as well as demonstrations. Massive fan of their work and currently using it in practice for text messaging patients, as well as sending documents, photos, and video consultations. Um, if you've got any comments or questions, feel free to let me know. I'll happily try and answer them during this session, as well as we'll obviously be able to see what they're producing at the time. Got me cup of tea as well for this. Just finished practice. Um, so yeah, we'll just wait to see when they start, really. If you are out there, feel free to say hi. Any comments and questions, welcome. Wow. It's weird when you're waiting for something, isn't it? How um yeah, how it can be really. Um So I guess one tip for live streams, always try and start on time. If you're not able to, try and have it so you've got a placeholder. So many of you'll see when I start my live streams, I've got that little thing at the start just whilst I get everything ready and make sure the stream is running and everything. Obviously, Accurix have the thumbnail that does that, which is their Accurix chain kind of toolbar thing that many of us have started to become accustomed to. And looks a little bit different because obviously this did get an update uh, about a week and a half ago, I believe it was. I think, unfortunately, Chain did kind of go down for a period of time, which I know many people were vocal on the groups and stuff about why that happened. Uh, but sometimes tech doesn't unfortunately work the way we want it to. It's interesting. Um, on my um, suggested next, I've got the Accurix um, FitNote texting document, which is obviously there for EMIS and for System 1. I know a couple of create, people have created their own versions, myself included. I've got one for System 1 that people are welcome to check out and things. And yeah, you can see some of the other things that I like to view because that's what YouTube tells me. <laughs> I like to view it and things. So we've got 24 people waiting for this at the moment. Um, so yeah, 26 people waiting. Ooh, lots of people jumping in. We'll see how this goes. So just a quick little comment there. So just going to bring that up. So hi, Helen. Hope you're doing well. Um, many of you who don't know Helen, definitely ch check out some of the work she's doing. So Helen's nicknamed the Wellbeing GP. 
awesome colleague, does some really amazing stuff and definitely one of the best uh, ways to get people moving and, and things at conferences and things. Um, I know that always goes down well and has been a fan favorite for some of our conferences as well. Hope you're doing all right. Hope you're ready to enjoy this session. Like many people, we're just sitting here waiting for Accurate to tell us what they're doing. Wow. And nice to see lots of people joining us. So we've currently got 10 people watching what we're doing on our channel. We've got about 27 waiting for Accurate to tell us what's going to happen. Let's see, shall we? I'm mindful of the fact that I'm going to have to leave the building soon. So that's going to be an interesting dichotomy to deal with. Whilst we are waiting, I guess I'll, we'll cover some of the other stuff that we've got planned coming up for, for everybody. So as we mentioned earlier, we've got our System One Facebook Users Group Conference that's later on in this month. Well, next month, obviously, we're not in July yet. But on the 24th of July, we've got that planned combination with System One. If you are interested in stuff, feel free to check out the tickets um, available at bit.ly slash S1FBUG2020. They're all in capitals. And that'll take you through to get you your, your ticket to join us for an online conference where System will be talking about their roadmap for the coming year, as well as tips on how to use System One more effectively and several presentations in terms of things that you can use with System One and get the best out of it as either a clinician or as a practice. And we're even looking at how that can work for things like networks and that kind of stuff as well. In addition, over the next couple of weeks, as many of you have commented and thank, for, uh, thank you for the comments as well, um, in terms of how to support you, I've created some videos about how to do MSK examinations by video consultation. So obviously many of us are now using video consultations in practice. And how we do that, challenging at times. Uh, I know last week covered ENT exams in, in terms of various different ways to do things, and particularly the video about how to take a video um, so I had to take a photo of your throat that you can send to patients. It seems to be going down really well. Um, so feel free to use that. I hope it is useful so you can send that to patients before they're trying to send those images back to you. Um, and yeah, um, so this week, uh, Thursday is going to be the upper limbs in terms of MSK. So neck, shoulders, um, elbows, wrists and hands. Um, and then the following week is going to be lower limbs. So that's going to be your spine, hips, knees, uh, and ankle and feet joints. So I hope that's useful for everyone. You may even get to see me bust a move. Okay, I know you don't want to see me bust a move. Um, but yeah, we've got some interesting edits that are coming into that one, hopefully, for you. Um, and then the week after, something special hopefully planned i'm hoping it will work um i'm trying to get it all up and ready in time um but it's a project i've been working on for the past mm, four months or so and i'm going to debut slightly less gp focused although there's definitely an element of it in there um but it's something a little bit fun something a little bit enjoyable hopefully and completely free although there's another part to it that may be more interesting for some people um, so yeah, that's what I'm going to say for now, because I don't want to spoil the surprise. Um, but we hopefully will have something that looks really awesome for you coming out on the 16th of July. Fingers crossed. No spoilers though. <laughs> So we are still waiting. Ooh. Apologies if you get double feedback from my comments. It's just kind of the way that it, it kind of posts and stuff. Um, I'm hoping it's working all right, actually, but we will see. And if anybody, again, if you do have questions, if you just joined us for the first time for this live stream, so I do go live every Tuesday, normally 6.45. I've kind of gone live a little bit early because I was hoping that we could join the Accurix live feed about their product, but they haven't started yet. So we will join them as soon as that does do so. But in terms of these kind of feeds, I go live every Tuesday straight after work, hence wearing the gear, my practice, as you can see talk about basically various different things you're welcome to ask me any questions welcome to discuss any kind of topics as well so previous weeks we've covered about how to do ent um, exams in terms of the kit i use and then prior to that we've also looked at various other things in terms of 
um, live streaming as well as other kind of tips. Um, I know many people out there um, in terms of general practice are looking a little bit anxious in terms of how things like the, the letters for travel and stuff are working. I know that's a discussion I've just been having earlier today. And one of the things and tips I've suggested to people is actually preempt it a little bit, get onto your social media platforms for your practice and, and inform your patients that these aren't the kind of letters that we would typically do in primary care. So I know some countries are asking for proof of um, uh, negative test um, before people travel now that's fine if they've had a test but what if they haven't and the other part is technically I mean as we know the test information is valid as a, only of the point they've had the test and stuff oh so someone's mentioned putting another link so let's try that so the Acoustics team have put this on I'm gonna see if I can join that uh, I'm just gonna go to their channel and see if we've got a different way Ah, there we are. Okay, so it looks like they've gone to a different video. Should work. I can see a frozen button for a moment. Um, what will happen is that when you leave a team, it pops down into the other teams, and then in the same way, you can join a team um, by clicking on that button. And that button will just be frozen for a moment. Tell me that a bit bigger. There we go. So if you guys can see that well. That usually does work. Uh, that was nothing that we changed with this new iteration of the inbox. Um, so in the same way that you have, oh, there they did. They did work. It just took a moment to load. I don't want to join the admin team again. There it is. So now it's up in, in my team. So if you're part of a team, you get notifications. If you're not part of a team, um, you don't get notifications on th those messages, but you still will have access to viewing them. So you can still click on um, other teams and look at what's happening in the COVID monitoring team, um, but not be notified of it um, every time there was a new message. That so that's nice. As an admin, I get all the notifications, which is really frustrating. Uh, the my teams, you can see asthma. Here's an asthma response. I can review it. I can either decide I want to save that to record directly, and that's done. Um, or I can say, no, I think that my col my specific colleague needs to look at this, um, and I can reassign it to to my colleague or to myself um, in order to, to decide how, how to follow up on that. Um, so you can reassign it to a colleague. So now that is uh, assigned away from the asthma team. Um, if we, I'll just, I have some messages prepared here and see if we can solve the videos again. Um, if you would like to reply to this specific um, conversation, um, this is one of the new behaviors that we're trying to introduce and we're still working on um, fine tuning, is that we have here the initial message, the response, and if you would like to reply again to this thread, you click the message button at the bottom. This will just open up the normal um, yeah. write message screen. But now the idea would be that this is trying to build threads of logically linked communication. Um, and that would then become part of this thread. It's still a work in progress. Um, so if, as we continue to work on that and, and um, release iterations, I'm always good to get feedback on that. Well, so far that's working really well. I've tried that today in practice and it worked perfectly. We then also have this mark as done button or done. Um, the idea here would be is that once you've saved a response to record, um, you think that this, um, the response is fine and, and no further follow-up is required. Um, you can just mark the message as done. That will remove it from the specific folder it's in. Okay. Um, but it can still always be found in the done folder. The done folder is a collective of all messages that have been marked as done for a practice. Um, and if you accidentally mark something as done, you can always reopen it and it will go back to the folder it was in before. So that will then go back to the COPD team. So I quite like that function because actually that means yeah. it's easier to archive or get rid of the messages that you don't uh, so need to keep. The, um, less of issue now that you're not notified of all of them, but that's a really cool feature. It's a little feature. bit hard to, to maybe find the specific message you're looking for. So we are looking to, to put in different types of filters. If you have specific ideas about types of filters that would really help you or your practice be able to manage workloads, especially in done or in all, um, we're really keen to introduce that quickly. Um, so that's something that we will be looking at. Um, on that note, one of the things that we know um, and have got lots of feedback on, so thank you for that from everyone, um, is that it would be nice to be able to view just patient responses in all, because right now we have um, all of the flories mixed in as well, and it, it can be quite a big folder. Mm -hmm. um, so we're looking to specifically add a filter for patient responses, because we know that is one of the big requests. So thank you again to everyone who, who provided that input. Um, we also have uh, the failed, which is now in down here in part, not part of a, the my team's other teams, but it does work very similarly, similarly in terms of notifications. 
So if you have um, the, the failed inbox on notify, you're getting notifications about it. And if you press uh, on mute, then you would not receive notifications. You would still receive notifications for any of your own messages that fail, um, just because we do think that that's an important clinical safety co um, component of it. If you think you've sent a message, but then it actually hasn't come through, I think it's uh, important, it's important that the person who sent that is notified. Um, but if your practice has a workflow where um, specifically a group of people um, are responsible for following up on those messages, they can the failed on unnotify and make sure that they get those messages. Um, we have a sent folder. This is where you can see all of your sent messages. Um, uh, any message that has been sent, um, we'll also look to put filters on this. So any feedback on that is really, really helpful. helpful. We have the scheduled folder, which uh, is where things such as pathways or um, uh, delay until 7.30 a.m. or on weekends, delay until Monday at 7.30 a.m. or um, the COVID monitoring questionnaires, which can be scheduled in advance, um, would, would show up and you would be able to see when they're queued for. Um, currently, we don't have an ability to cancel them from the inbox itself. You would still need to go to your settings uh, to manage practice to be able to do that, um, but that is something that we would look to introduce in the future. Um, one of the things that has definitely changed about the inbox and the, is, is very different because of the data model is now you can't just scroll up on a message and see the entire thread of that patient's um, communication history. And we know that this is, is definitely valuable, um, but unfortunately it's not something that works uh, as well when you try to create the cohesive um, uh, snippets of communication threads rather than one kind of uh, chronological thread. So one thing that we've introduced, which we know is, is different, um, but hopefully she does fulfill that need, is if you go to the current EMIS web patient um, and click on whoever you have open, you should be able to see all of the messages related to them. Um, this patient doesn't have very many, but if I open Minnie Mouse, um, we will see lots because she's one of our favorite test patients. Um, So then you would be able to see all of the messages. So that's a question whether or not that feature works the same on system one. Clearly, as a system one user, keen to know. You still be able to get a bit of an overview of the communication history that, have ha that has happened um, for that specific patient. Um, and you can also create a new message, um, composing a new message directly from the inbox by clicking that. Um, one of the things that um, we did change that we got some feedback on in the Facebook group, so thank you for those who provided that, was it used to be that if you click um, on the SMS icon from the, from the toolbar and you had the inbox open, we would pull through the current EMIS patient. Um, now what we do instead, which, which is a difference, is if you have um, this patient, Laura Middleton, and you press SMS icon, um, it would pull up the, the, the right message screen for uh, should pull it up for Laura. It might be that mine, mine hasn't updated, but that is one change that we just put in um, about a day ago um, because we know that that was something that people that people really wanted. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's the main things I wanted to go over. Um, is there a couple questions I can answer, Annie? Uh, yes, there is. Hang on one second. Okay, great. So um, the first question um, is from Yi Lim, and um, he, he asked, uh, would love to have the ability to create more teams within the practice. Is this in the pipeline? Uh, yeah, that's an excellent question. Um, so it's something that we're doing a little bit of research on right now into figuring out how we could um, support this. Um, to be logically speaking, um, it will most likely be that there will be some default teams um, that so I'm assuming this is because they're using a separate webinar software, which you could register to use. Unfortunately, I didn't get the option to do so and thought I'd just join in through YouTube, recognize that I may or may not be able to dial in for this. So I donn't want to take a space for somebody else. It's definitely something that would help practice in their practices in their workflow and is something that we want to support. So it will be definitely something that we that we uh, iterate on and, and try to um, improve. Okay, thank you. Uh, we also have a question from Jody. Um, this cut group and Luton love the new inbox so far. We love the separation of user replies and the done function. Thank you, Jody. Good to hear. Um, okay, I'm, yeah, I'm just picking through to see if there are any more about inbox. Can the done folder be ordered alphabetically? 
Uh, that's a really good uh, question. One of the things that we're thinking about with the done folder in terms of filtering is probably being, being able to filter by either who marked it as done or who was assigned it when it was marked as done. So you'd be able to maybe sort um, all of the asthma um, questionnaires that were marked as done or all of the specific um, uh, responses that you yourself has had marked as done. Um, that's probably the direction we're looking at, um, but definitely something we can consider in terms of sorting alphabetically if that would be helpful. Thank you. Um, and can the assignment choice be more obvious, um, maybe below the save to record? Um, sorry, I just saw the save to record button. Yeah, um, that's really good feedback. Um, I know our designer is quite keen to uh, iterate a little bit on just the design behaviors of that bottom right corner and the, how the buttons work and trying to make them a little bit more clear and a bit more intuitive. So um, definitely something that we can we can work on. Um, another thing that we know with the assign function is it would be a little bit more helpful to be able to type rather than scroll through a really long list. Yep, definitely agree with that. Um, so also something that we are considering um, as we move forward. And I have one more. Uh, when you reassign messages, can you leave a note explaining why you reassigned? So for our um, EGP uh, learners that are watching, um, so thankfully um, Accurix have joined us. They've okay. pointed us to the right stream for the YouTube. If you do have any questions, pop them in the comments. They'll happily try and pass them over and stuff. Um, I know some of you watching on Facebook, so you wouldn't have seen that comment, so that's why I put it on the screen. If you do put that and it's on the Facebook one and they can't see it, let me know. I will patch them through. So looks like we've got some dual watching going on here um, okay so now um, we can pass it to Lucy who's gonna um, present on our new patient, patient triage feature you can go ahead and share your screen now I've just asked whether the thread function works in S1 I appreciate they moved on so uh, let's see how this goes and then moving on to the next thing. Ah, the dreaded mute. Oh, Lucy, I think you're still on mute. Thank you. Can you hear me now? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that, everybody. Um, hello, I'm Lucy. I'm one of the clinical leads here at Accurex. Um, and I've spent the last uh, couple of months working on patient triage, which is our um, solution to online consulting. So this um, is quite cool. I have seen this already. Well, a demo of it. Um, um, this was about a week ago. So, so let's see how this goes. There will be a link to online consulting on a practices website. So here we, we are this week um, and for the next couple of weeks, piloting with a small number of practices to get a sense of what works, what doesn't work, what, what needs to happen next. Um, this is Trumpington Street, one of our pilot sites. Um, so you can see on their website. What if that's related to Mr. Trump or as he likes to be known, the D man. Their version and move on to our demo version so they don't get a request. And what this link does, it will open up a, uh, a web page that the patient can access. Um, they can use it to submit medical queries or admin queries. Um, there's no, as you can see, I've just clicked on it. There's no need to set up an account. There's no need to download an app. We try to make it very accessible and very simple for the patient. Um, so the first thing that the patient gets to see is this message here, which says that the request will be dealt with by a member of the team within two working days. Um, this is something we might be looking to personalise for the practice. We could potentially have different messages, um, for different practices with about time frame, or um, different messages uh, whether or not it's opening hours or, or out of hours for the practice. So I think the ability to change that's really important and positive as well. Probably like a little bit bolder, so it stands out a little bit more. It does kind of blend into the background just because of the background of the colour and things. But that's a great first start. There are three things the patient can do. First Maybe all, sticking a red box around it would be a good idea. Click here to get self-help advice. Or as I said, they can ask about medical queries or admin queries. I'll show you admin queries quickly first. What we've done here is, um, oh, sorry. So before the patient can do anything, they first have to uh, submit 
a response saying that they don't have any serious red flag symptoms. If they do say that they have any of these symptoms, they get taken to a page which says you should consider seeking more serious medical help and the practice will not have been not been alerted that you've got this, you've, you've clicked here. And then they can't do anything else. They can't submit a query without going back and starting again. So let's say they don't. Then there are a number of admin queries that the patient can select. So here are the ones that we've got at the moment, but mm -hmm. we're already thinking about adding other ones, such as um, the travel vax to uh, sign up to a practice, that sort of thing. Travel vax. And how we've designed this. Is <laughs> Sorry, my own personal bugbear. I'd love travel vaccinations to be in there. Request has a different series of questions associated with it, such that in an ideal world, the patient should fill in enough information that the practice can entirely deal with that request without having to then contact the patient and seek more information. So for example, with a fit note, um, they're told that first of all prompted that they can self-certify if needs be, or, or, or prompted to go and get an, an NHS isolation note if needs be. Yep. If not, they're asked, is it a new note or an extension of a note? Mm -hmm. um, what the medical problem is, when the illness is from and to, and here, here they're prompted to ask some questions about things like delayed phase, return to work, that sort of thing. So each question has a different series of um, answers associated with it. So I'll go back and show you the uh, medical issue. So again, they do the red flag screener. And so if you are joining us guys, so this is a live stream of the Accurix new functionality, the online questionnaire or patient triage as they call it. If you do have any questions or comments, we've got some of their team watching this apparently, so feel free to share those in. Anyone that they're living with with confirmed COVID, they don't have confirmed COVID and they also don't have any COVID symptoms. And, and again, I linked the NHS um, web website if they're worried. And then this is all of the questions that we ask for a medical problem. So what we've done is we've tried to keep it relatively short and sweet, with the idea being that this is this should be enough information um, for the patient to submit such that you know what the problem is, you know what they're hoping for from your interaction with them. And um, you should be able to get the right patient into the right appointment with the right person with, within the right time frame. Um, but it's not too much information for the patient to be submitting. So, uh, first of all, what is the problem? Um, Back pain, cool. One question, how long has this been going on and is it getting better or worse? And then here we've got sort of two icy questions. So is there anything you're particularly worried about? Icy cold or icy ice? <laughs> I'm guessing that's ice as in ideas, concerns and expectations. And how would you like us to help? And then a couple of practical questions. Mm -hmm. so how soon do you think you need a response? Um, and I know a lot of practice might be worried about um, a huge number of patient requests coming in who expect an immediate response, but actually from the pilots, we're currently seeing that people are relatively relaxed. They're expecting responses tomorrow or in the next three days. And then are there any times that we can't contact you? So this I like because it gives the practice, rather than asking for when they are available, it's more in a question of when they're not available. And, then the patient um, and that can be more useful information. Equally after they've submitted an admin request, they're all, sorry, as part of submitting an admin request, they're also, they'll also come through to this page. Um, so the patient's wanted to enter their name, their date of birth, um, their gender, um, their postcode, and then their phone number. So they're prompted to put in a mobile number, and I'll show you why. Um, because this allows us this if they put in a mobile number then this button pop this uh, text pops up which allows us to do two-factor authentication so it allows us to see if they are physically if they physically have access to that phone um so now i should have been sent a text 
fantastic for e commerce. So, this is just like when you access your bank accounts or other kind of accounts. Google, in particular, uses this a lot. Two factor authentication is thought to be really helpful and secure. Um, I use this a lot for various programs. Um, password managers, in there particular, a massive thing to use. So, I can check all the details. And then I'm asked, how should we contact you? Um, I'll go with a text message and a phone call. Now, if they pick any of the sort of face to face interactive options, uh, this pops up, which is to promote continuity of care. So it says that if you see someone about this particular problem before... It's so that's a nice little touch. I know continuity is one of those challenges when people are working cross-site, um, well, part-time, that kind of stuff, and this can help and promote that. Program. And I like the fact they've got that functionality it, there. This message pops up, prompting them again to seek more emergent healthcare if needed. Um, so so that is as simple as that. Now, how this will look, how it comes through to the practice varies depending on whether or not uh, it's in the pilot stage as it is now, excuse me. That's, that's my request that's just come through. So we're currently running a pilot um, or a, a beta stage whereby this is not integrated with EMIS with system one. These requests at present will be coming through into the practice's email inbox from a, a secure accurex nhs.net email account so uh, the patient doesn't get your email and you can't reply to the patient through the email I'll, I'll speak to you in a moment about what we're going to be doing after this beta phase but as at present in the non-integrated phase it's coming through like this and you can see from the subject line what type so of clearly integration be preferred but they're going to explain that shortly I click on it this is roughly what it looks like at the moment um so you've got the patient's information here you've got the body of the message here and the idea is that you can just quickly copy and paste this information and save it in the notes um there are th the information that we ask for in identifying a patient um so their name their date of birth their postcode and their gender what that does is it allows us to look the patient up on the PDF, the spine, which is the national, the, the NHS national database of NHS patients. Um, then there are three possible things that can happen. The first is that the patient's put in all of their information correctly, and they've shown that they've got physical access to the mobile phone that they've put in, and that phone number matches what's on the, the record. And that, we believe, means that they definitely are who they say they are. So we're pretty happy saying that that's definitely that patient. So that's a confirmed match. And that's Secondly, similar to what we'd use in practice, I guess, so no different in that depth of PDF checks that we do often with patients when they call up for us. But um, they haven't passed that two-factor authentication. So we that's a suggested match whereby we say we think it's this patient, but would quite like someone in the practice to check. And then the third possible state is we search the spine and nobody comes, no, no match comes back. So we, then we say that's an unmatched patient. So this is what this is what this is talking about here, where it says patient ID needs verifying. So this is one of the latter two states where we're not completely confident this person is. Sorry about that, EGP learners. Um... Mention. So you've either got the, the third state of the patient hasn't been found at all. You've got a matched patient. So apologies about that. My uh, computer yeah, logged me out because I'm now been apparently work too long for which is where we say to, to say here. So we're back anyway. To say yes, I do think it's that person. So I'll quickly run through these. Um, so for this this chap here, Warren Barton, he's an unfound <coughs> patient. So then you can so i like the fact that it's quite clear about the patients it hasn't you found that you know there's a separate kind of identifier for that i think that's really useful this guy. so i'll confirm it's him and now he's gone nice and blue and he's matched um stephanie albion she's matched fantastic and just for reference 
the character limit on what patients can put in in the medical problems is about 300 characters, which is roughly this amount of text. So again, these are things that may change as if we find out patients or practices want more or less information, but we believe it's roughly the right amount such that you can get a good sense of what's going on, but it's not going to allow the patient. I guess I prefer a different colouring mechanism for these, just to make it a little bit more obvious. That would this work from a UI perspective, I think, because so it's just it's colours and text work better if you've got differentiation. Uh, That's obviously something to consider in the future. And in this case, the practice will be prompted to confirm the identity of the patient. So there'll be a, a range of different options. You might telephone them, or it might be consistent with your prior knowledge or with the medical record. So again, you can confirm the patient, and now they've gone nice and blue. Uh, something to be aware of is that even with all of the red flag screening questions, we cannot guarantee that no unwell patients won't come through and use this. Um, so Linda James here probably shouldn't have come through to this. She sounds like she needs more serious medical attention. Um, so here, the practice has the ability to mark this as urgent. And what that does is it turns it red and it shoots out the top of the inbox so it can be easily seen. Um, and it's a nice little function. That's all I've got to demo, so I'll await further questions. And if anyone has any comments or questions, I'm Lucy with a Y at accurex.com. Thank you, Lucy. Now we'll get into questions. Okay, so um, the most popular question right now um, is about chain SMS, um, uh, asking about um, why we default saying hi first name to some patients and then dear last name to um, other patients in the greeting of a text message. Um, so um, we do this based on um, user research that we did with patients about how they um, preferred to be um, like, yeah, spoken to by their GPs and found that um, the majority of patients preferred a more informal greeting. Um, but then based on feedback from users who felt uncomfortable um, speaking casually to older patients, um, we decided to default um, high first name for patients under 30 and then dear last name for patients over 30. Um, this still can be changed manually within the text messages. Interesting, I missed that one. Um, okay, so this next one is about inbox. Um, asking, can you deputize your inboxes to others for annual leave? It's a really good question. Um, so currently- Yeah, definitely a good question. Um, there's no ability to um, mm. find an inbox. Um, the way you would need to check it right now is to go to the all folder. And if you look at the all folder in the middle column, you can see at the bottom the either name or the team in which um, a message is currently assigned. And you can scan for that um, colleague who is, is away. Um, we know in the future that we want to build a, a filter to help um, filter by specific uh, colleagues so that you could then keep an eye on a colleague that's away for a certain amount of time. But um, that's currently the workflow that we have. Thanks, Hannah. Okay, the next question is about creating SMS templates. Um, asking if um, a template that you've created for yourself can be moved into a colleague's template. Um, at the moment, no, but you can make templates and save them into the practice template section, and then those will be available for everyone in the practice. So I don't know if the accurate people can hear me. I'll put it in the chat. But um, the question is, how does this work with the NHS app and NHS login? Oh, that's a good question. I believe that's for um, patient triage. Jen? I'm, oh. Well, I'm happy to take that. So um, on the NHS app front, we're working with the NHS app team to make sure that we can embed this within the app. Um, on NHS login, so if a patient is using the NHS app, then um, what, what we're, where we're trying to get to is that they won't need to put in their details. So, so we'll, we'll get from the NHS login who they are and they won't need to do any of that um, entering their demographics or the mobile number. In terms of using NHS login, if a patient isn't using the NHS app, um, it's something we, we considered and we discussed when we were looking at how to do 
verify a patient's identity and we, we do have access to, to NHS login, something we do use. What we found is that there's too much friction for patients at the moment um, and it makes it too, um, too difficult essentially and there's quite a high drop off in going through the process, uh, you know, submitting a video and a, and a piece of identity and so on. So that, that's where we're heading. We're hoping to get the NHS app one done later in the year. Um, but we've the reason we've done the phone verification is is to avoid needing uh, patients to sign up to NHS login. We might change that when NHS login is much more widely. And that's available. a fair point, to be fair. Although the NHS login is more secure, um, it does take a while to use. It's not something that can be used instantly. And because of COVID in particular, there's been quite a lot of delay. Um, so before they say it takes up to two hours to get the verification. I know during COVID, some people are saying it's taking up to about two weeks for that verification to happen. So I can understand that, although definitely keen that that's where the trajectory moves. For example, if the patient's phone is out of service and or has been shut off for more than or for 72 hours, the message will fail. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's an invalid phone number. Um, okay, um, this one's about patient triage. When a patient texts that they're happy to be contacted by mobile, can you automatically add a coded consent into the EMIS? It's a good idea. We'll, we'll, we'll look at that and we'll look into it. Thank you. Um, oh, and this one is um, about inbox. Is there any way of having an out of office, out of office option um, that we can deputize someone to accept our texts when we're on holiday? Um, yeah, it's a really good suggestion. Um, I know that there was some discussion on the Facebook group about it, um, and and I my question was if people um, use their emus out of office, which it did seem that people um, are using, so it could be that. Um, we can uh, either link something up or create something so it's easy to make sure that your messages can be delegated when you're out of office. Um, not something we currently support, but definitely something for us to consider for the future. Thanks, Anna. A lot of emus chalk. Okay, Love it if we hear something about system one. Patient triage. My CTG has already chosen to use another online triage tool and therefore payment is mm. already taken care of and isn't hitting the practice directly. Will it cost for a practice or CTG to choose online triage uh, we're presuming chain will remain free for practices. Yeah, so th this is, um, as you can understand, quite quite a common question. Um, and yes, um, chain uh, will remain free for practices. We're working with NHS Digital and with CCGs to make sure cost is taken care of there. Um, specifically for um, patient triage, um, what we what we've agreed is a process that means if a practice chooses to use us instead of something else that's already been procured um, we essentially go through a, a bit of a, just a process with the ccg and with nhs digital um, to make sure that um, we're mindful of any contracts in place but equally practices can you know do you get the opportunity to um to use something so it's something that we're we're working on um quite closely with with, with nhs digital um, to be able to, to allow, and it shouldn't be a barrier to, to practice adopting this and, and having it funded. Thank you. Um, these next two questions are about um, personalizing patient triage, asking um, if you can customize um, local services rather than the NHS or 111 website, and another one just asking generally how much um, customization can be done within it. Yeah. yeah, I can take this one. Um, yeah, so we we started out with the beta sites not having any of that customization, um, but a lot of the feedback we've had from them and reading some of, uh, through some of these questions mm -hmm. as well. Uh, the next thing we're going to be looking into from kind of like the patient side will be that customization. So, for example, if you wanted to change the amount of time that you said to the patients that they would get a response by, um, definitely signposting to local services is another one that we want to look into as well. So that um, kind of customization is definitely coming. Okay, and we have another um, question asking if it's possible to restrict the number of requests that can be made um, for, to the practice each day, uh, specifically for, for practices that have 
demand issues um, to enable some control over the workload. Good question. I don't think that would be a plan at the moment. Um, I, I think I think I can totally see why there are concerns about demand and capacity to meet that demand. Um, but that's got to be balanced against it being something that's very accessible and an actually useful mm -hmm. tool. Um, yeah, I, I agree with that. I think that's going to be a challenging thing, firstly, from a tech um, point of it, view, particularly since this really system doesn't directly uh, integrate uh, with the patient the systems. The, the, the um, and I think spoke, maybe a, a system where perhaps you can switch it on and off at particular and times, and possibly, and but then that's going to make it a bit more of an issue you could potentially uh, whether they can allow it for you can have an influx at particular times uh, so plan Ooh, big question in line with um, other products on the market so it'll be around 25 pence a patient um, okay we're looking at building up like a, an accurax plus tier which will include run triage and a lot more features like batch messaging and things like that um, and we haven't yet confirmed the, the pricing of that but it's we're really eager to make sure this is something that can be affordable by, by every practice and every CCG. Thank you. Uh, well, the so for a 10,000 patient practice, that's going to cost about £2,500. Um, if you work out that an average GP session will cost less than that um, per week, if that's how much it saves you by the workload and stuff, are you quids in? Sort of different folders or teams or a prescribing pharmacist older team um, is is kind of what we're working out at the moment. Thank you. And um, we have another question about cost. Oh, it just jumped off my screen. Um, uh, what happens if um, the CCG won't fund it? Will individual practices be able to subscribe? Um, that's that's a really good question. And, and, and to be honest, we uh, haven't got that far yet. Um, we've been focused on, on get, getting it live in, in the first few practices. Um, I'm sure we'll be able to work out a way where you know, practices can continue to use us. There is central funding um, for this, so practices should, you know, shouldn't need to, but if that's the only way practices can, then I'm sure that's something we can work out. I think it's important to remember many places have already commissioned um, the services because it's based off four, first year, first five year forward view funding. Year funding. Um, so it's definitely worth having a chat with your CCG about how this may work for you. Here. If it still looks like the old toolbar, you'll just click the initial icon here about oh, and oh, sorry, it popped up on another screen. Yeah, click about to see this. Um, and then if um, you're on an older version right here, there'll be a button here that says upgrade now and you just click that and chain will update. And if you still see issues after that, um, you can just visit our support center and um, there are some articles in there to help or you can just start a chat with um, with a member of the support team and we can help. Okay, let's see what's next. Um, awesome. What happens if the mobile number um, the patient provides is different um, to the one on their EMS record? Good question. So any valid number, be it mobile or um, landline, will work. That's completely fine, but they have to put in any contact number. Um, if it's not the same as on their record, they will still submit the request, but it means they won't uh, they won't come up as a, um, a definite match. They will only come up as a suggested match. Okay, great, thanks. And another one um, asking if... Um, so that's a common thing, particularly in patients, that, populations where they've got high mobility, loader and deprivation no, elements. So it's, but again, important to know that, that you have to take that extra step to verify the patient. From the beta sites about what, what they would want. Um, something to be aware of is that in free text, uh, free text as these requests are, automatically coding it would be kind of assuming the patient is completely accurate about what they're writing that they're writing they have got sciatica or they have got say um nystagmus when actually what they've got is vertigo or something so to me so um uh it's something that we can work on but we'd want to have some sensible discussions around it first 
I think for simple things like smoking, yes, no, that's a possibility. Like Lucy said, more complex stuff is going to be changed. Places other than the website, like on a poster. Absolutely. I don't know where you'd put a poster at the moment that lots of patients would see it. Um, but uh, definitely, yeah, Facebook groups, posters, texting patients, whatever you would feel comfortable with as a practice. Great, thanks. Is it possible to have a checkbox that a patient ticks um, to say that they're happy to receive replies, including medical info, to be sent to their mobile number? That one for Jacob. Um, yeah, I mean, it's possible. We just need to like look at the flow and um, sort of one question would be, for example, if a patient doesn't tick that, then, um, but they do say they want a message, how are you going to contact them and things like that. So we'll, we'll look, we'll look more broadly and that that's exactly what we're doing the part in the pilot is looking at both how does the practice receive this information, but also um, what to pay, how do patients use it and what do they expect? So we've actually done quite a lot of patient research as well of, of, of um, them, them going through the journey. Thank you. Uh, is there a time limit for patients to send queries like working hours and what about weekends or bank holidays? So it's available 24-7, um, which is very much one of the benefits of it that you're not having to do this within working hours as a patient, um, that you can do it on a Saturday night. Mm, sensible. Um, I think one of the ways in which we want to customize a bit more is maybe having bespoke messaging around uh, a patient's opening hours, for example. Um, so being able to at least explain to the patient, like, these, this is the time in which, you know, two working days is two working days from the opening hours. So again, we'll, we can fit that into the customization options as well. Thank you. Um, and is this only going to be available in England or will it work in Northern Ireland where we don't use the sign? Oh, interesting question. All right, Jacob, you have to let me on this. I think I think for the beta practices um, where it's only for England at the moment, um, I'm not sure what the plan would be after that. Jacob? Yeah, yeah, no, that's exactly right. We've, we've started in England. There are ways we can support and without the spine, but we need to work out another way to verify patients. Um, because, it, um, it, you know, if we're just sending an email, it's one thing, but if we're actually letting you save to the medical record in one click, we need to be, we need to let you be quite confident in who the patient is. Um, and so we would need to work out mm. another way to um, verify who a patient is. Great, thanks. Um, and then there are a couple of questions um, asking if this webinar is going to be recorded. Yes, we are recording and um, this will be available on our YouTube channel and um, I'll share the links to that at the end of this presentation. But not on the original link. <laughs> um, and then someone is asking about a tutorial video to set up templates. Yep, we also have um, that on our YouTube channel and in our help center and we have um, links for both of those pages um, on my next slide. Oh yeah, Hannah, someone here is asking about um, flurry messages, um, saying if a patient does not reply um, for an, um, a flurry, why, um, why can't we resend the text? Um, the message comes up saying the patient is already enrolled in another message. Yeah, it's a great question. So when we designed the flurry questionnaires, um, we wanted to make sure that um, patients weren't getting multiple messages, um, which could be kind of confusing. Um, and potentially irritating if, if they um, were planning to fill it out later or um, didn't want to fill it out and would rather have a face-to-face -face, um, appointment or a video call or phone call appointment. Um, so the questionnaires currently are only live for seven days and during that time another one cannot be sent. Um, if for whatever reason maybe you've sent it to the wrong phone number and now you have the correct phone number, um, you can go to um, that current EMS patient in the way I showed on the inbox find that original sent message and then copy the link of that unique flurry questionnaire and then send it in a normal message again. Um, otherwise, you just need to wait until the seven day timeout, you get a message that says that the link has timed out and then you can resend um, a questionnaire for, for that patient. Um, that's just the logic that we put in to help protect patients from um, being inundated with too many um, requests for questionnaires. 
um, and, and mm -hmm. something to protect that there's not a duplication happening. Thank you. Um, the next one is when can we sign up and start using the online triage? Um, so we emailed uh, practices in the last week to say if you're interested in this, um, here's a form to fill in. Um, if you haven't got that, so check your email inbox. If you haven't got that, again, email me, lucy at accurex.com. Um, and so we're currently gently rolling out with a, a few beta practices um, before we're going to go national in September, I think. Um, and so there will there will be opportunities to get onto the beta program, but fill in that form and we'll get back to you. Um, and this next one is asking if patient triage will be available um, for patients who need translation. Yeah, so that's a good question. So, so this is a question I asked during my demo. Um, well, a slightly different version of it. For, yeah, to meet everybody's needs. Um, that's one of the things that we're looking at, not for the uh, beta program, but for certainly for future versions coming up in the next few months. That's one of the things that's top of our list. So. I mean, one option is to suggest to your patients to use it, for example, in Google Translate, which will automatically translate the page for them. That's an option, a workaround. It's not the greatest workaround, but it would help. And then when you can obviously use that mechanism to translate the information back, again, using Google Translate. I know some practices are apprehensive about that. Trying to find out what other people were using and what they didn't did and didn't like about it. And there is quite a range of what's available out there. Um, so some products ask a lot of information up front and then that provides like a very long detailed sort of consultation with multiple questions and they ask about positive symptoms and negative symptoms and some people really like that some of the clinicians really really like that um, on balance most people prefer something simpler and certainly patients definitely prefer something a lot simpler so this is this is more similar to other products which are out there which ask fewer questions. Um, one thing which will differentiate us is that we are going to be integrated into the record um, pretty soon. Yeah. And that's a big thing. I, I know many of the other systems are a bit more challenging. To allow you to um, create your own template for hey, my question. <laughs> um, so we don't. Um, port this at the moment no. in the future, um, but in the meantime, if there's um, our pathways that um, that you'd like us to add, feel free to just message us um, on a, in our support center or in our community, and we can um, pass that on to our product team for consideration. Okay, still got to wait then. Shame that I think pathways has the potential to be a real game changer in the way that you engage with patients and follow them up um, from simple things as simple as follow for contacts to. Uh, medication um, templates in terms of how to take your meds, ops, titrate medication, for example, that can really be effective. Sorry, Annie, I didn't get, catch, catch the beginning of that. Do we? Um, so, yeah, someone asking if they're already signed up with another online consultation provider. Do you yep. know where they would stand with moving to Accurex and could be... Contracts, that would be the big thing. Yep. Um, so it shouldn't be a barrier to you getting started in, in using us. Um, it's hard to say in general because it depends on the specific arrangement that your CCG has with that supplier. Um, but like I mentioned earlier, um, we've um, worked on a process with NHS Digital that means um, practices should you know, be able to um, use whatever, whatever's most useful um, and, and, and stick with that. And there might need to be a, co a conversation with the CCG and perhaps might need to explain um, sort of what, why, they've, why they've opted for, for using our spend plans around that. Um, but it's something we're, we're really keen to support is, um, as hopefully people have seen, like, um, you know, we're, we're all about getting a maximum benefit out to the maximum number of practices. Um, and with patient triage, are we going to allow patients to send in photos with their medical query? Yeah, we've heard this um, quite a few times now. It's definitely something um, we'll, we'll look to add. Yeah, I think that's a prerequisite. It has to be there. A lot of things like I've got a rash. Um, I want. I've got this lump module, uh, mole, that kind of thing. Just having that 
at the start rather than having to then ask the patient to apply that really powerful and better way of managing the That's workflow. Good question. So it's something that the practice will have to be very much aware of that there is a possibility that patients will come through to them who aren't their patients, which is one of the reasons that we've made it um, mandatory the patient has to put in a phone number that you can contact them on. So the practice will need to have some sort of protocol for dealing with that. Um, I don't think it's happened often so far, um, but that there may well be uh, it's something we're discussing this week. There may well be clever ways that we can flag that up uh, to the patient or to the practice that this isn't somebody who's on your books. So that's a question I asked in my demo as well. Yeah. Um, clearly an important one. Uh, be interesting to see how many numbers they have. Children um, who probably don't have a mobile number recorded. Oh yeah, great question. So um, something that we will again be adding when when this gets bigger and shinier and has more functionality, but again, it's pretty high up the priority list, is the ability to submit a request on behalf of somebody else, which is really pertinent for paediatrics or for patients who have um, carers or family members doing things. For so that's the concept of so having proxy access, um, and we're seeing increasing need for that. So the other group to consider is care home um, workers, where they may be trying to make contact with a practice for their patients, which is the care home residents. And then next one's for Jacob. Any news on mass texting? Um, it is, it is um, <laughs> part of our active trust here, which we're hoping to uh, get live before the end of the year. Um, we, we prioritised um, online consultation. So this is probably the most common and frequent question that accurates get. Almost every couple of weeks, you will see this ping up on the groups. Yes, I can understand why people want it. I can also understand why Acrix have not focused Sorry, on this. It, it, they, I think they are right in focusing on the other things that they've been looking at rather than just on bulk text messaging because there are other companies that provide this at the moment. And as we've seen, that's given them the ability to focus on some other things that have really made game changes for practices. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, we're looking into this. At the moment, we are giving the um, beta practices um kind of their stats by week by week so we're working with them to figure out what the most valuable metrics would be for them to see rather than provide them with tons of data they don't really care about um but yeah we'll be we'll be building that in as well cool dashboards important so presumably what the most popular things at the moment are what type of requests who buy and when and um, number of aborted requests and that's a metric that's going to be really interesting to share. Someone's asking if they can remove the option for face-to-face -face appointment on the online triage system. Um, as our practice triages all face-to-face -face appointments, having the option there may build expectations, which we don't want from patients. Yeah, um, Alicia, I'm, I'm sure you can talk to this as well. We have heard that a few times now, especially in the current climate for removing that face-to-face -face option. Um, so that's either something we'll do across the board or add as one of the customization options. Um, in some families, one mobile uh, may be shared by more than one person. Is there any way that our system can flag this up? It's an interesting question, actually. Um, I presume this is for more generally sending uh, messages out to patients. Uh, it's not something we currently do, but yeah, can definitely look at um, look at that and the product. Keen to know how they do that. That's a challenge, I think, because that requires sharing data across patient, patient records, but possible, I guess. These guys are far more techie than I am. Well, while Annie's just um, digging up the, ne the next question, so, sorry, the delay on our side, they, they jump around a bit sometimes as, as more come in and, and people upvote them. So we're just trying to make sure that we answer all of them. Um, I think it's, it's really worth just reiterating, hopefully people who've um, been using us for a while, um, particularly you know, six months plus, have you know are more used to the fact that we um, will get something out there and then we'll keep updating it and, and releasing it and improving it. And um, Agree. It's exactly the same here. So, um, you know, what what we've demoed today is very much our, our first version, our, our beta version. But a lot of the things that that have been brought up in the questions are exactly what we're discussing on a daily basis. Whether that's around um, integration, right at the top of the list, um, customization, proxy access, um, sending photos, all these sorts of things are, are you know very um, high on our minds. But it, it's really helpful to to you know, validate validate that it's what you want to see in there too. 
Um, but yeah, do expect it to uh, to keep improving and, and more updates to keep coming. Um, do we need any more pilot volunteers? <laughs> I'm sure there's lots of prices that would love to jump on and to join in. For, um, for more to sign up, there is there is a we, we, we've got quite a few keen beans, so we've got a, a wait list. But please do get in touch because we, we are in a in a phased way going to be rolling out to various parts on the wait list. So again, the, the email that we sent in the last week that has the link, make sure your practice is on there, filled it in. And if you don't have it, email me. Um, so another um, question is about um, patient triage um, requests for fit notes. The date on well from is often not the same as the date the fit note is needed for. And I also wonder whether patients can make a choice um, whether to answer more expensive questions afterwards so the clinician will have less questions to ask on contact but doesn't stop them from submitting a request initially. That's really good feedback. Um, uh, please email me about that because I'd love to know exactly what extra information you'd want to put in the fit note. And um, we can certainly change the copy just to say, when would you like this note to be um, sort of active from rather than when would you become okay. well? Interesting. So these are, these are things we can definitely change, yeah. Um, another question asking how um, the inquiries get transferred into the patient's record. How the patient triage entry, how the requests. So um, where I showed you where the request is, the idea there'd be a sort of a one click button, which would say something like copy to record. That would just be like a very simple one click into record process. And probably it would come in as a consultation note. Mm -hmm. Um, and then um, another question asking if it will be customizable um, and then would it have the option to highlight our private service and estimated costs? Uh, yeah, that's that's really good feedback. I think that kind of comes under the the umbrella of customization. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll definitely be doing some more research into that when we come to it. Um, and what happens if the patient is not registered? Can it be rejected and the patient um, informed, or is the practice responsible for doing that? I think they're going to be responsible for yeah, some contact. Yeah. For that. Yeah. Um, so, so, as I said before, that's why we um, make sure that you will be able to contact the patient to let them know. Um, but there are certainly tweaks that we can do to make that easier to flag up. And I think it's important to remember that it's not necessarily that you have to provide them the care, but that's mainly the case of um, signposting them to the appropriate place they need to go, for example, back to their own practice. We'll definitely make that easier and can make it a sort of one-click operation to let the patient know. And these are exactly the sort of things that we'll, we'll learn once, once practices are using it at scale. Great, thank you. Um, this next one, Hannah, I, um, I think is about Flory. Are you really- So easy because I'm going to have to head off soon. So I'm, it looks like they're planning on going a little bit longer than they anticipated. So I may not be able to stick around for the whole thing. Uh, I'll give it a couple more minutes just to see how we go. Question. We are looking to, to build more Flory's. They will likely be part of Accurex Plus as uh, Jacob has mentioned. Um, there is one that we're considering for a diabetes review, um, but uh, I think we're still trying to, to real, really nail down what are the questions to be included. Um, there's quite a lot of information that is required to assess, um, and some of it's not necessarily the most well suited for um, a mobile based questionnaire. Um, so we're still ironing those out, but we are expecting to have more flurries um, across the board um, for things like diabetes, but also things like um, UTI, ERD, um, health checks, and other things. Stay tuned. Thank you. Um, for patient triage, have we considered improved access providers or out of hours providers, and how would this link to practices? Do, do you mean like, I, I don't really answer the question, do you mean sort of like urgent care centers? I, I think it's probably a mix of um, walk in centers, urgent care, out of hours, oh. things like that. Um, so, 
so yeah what, what you know one once this is live and established in general practice we're keen to expand it beyond to other settings not just in primary care so so there will, will be certain um and we've seen that with um, the video consultations toolbar. So they initially had that in practices and then extended to other places that can use it through the Fleming route. Uh, they could get value from this, um, but very much starting in, in general practice. Um, and we have a question. Would it be possible to also signpost or safety net mental health queries with a link to NHS mental health websites? Um, while they're waiting for a reply from us um, when it comes through the online triage system? Mm. Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, in terms of the things that we have safety netted for, um, we've had to be quite, we've, we've chosen to be relatively selective because obviously anything can be a red flag symptom depending on the patient's background. Mm -hmm. um, so we haven't mentioned mental health queries. If this is popular, we can absolutely change. We can think about changing it. Um, so what the, the flags that we've got up there are are in line with what other products have done. I guess the other way of looking at that, would you give those details to a patient when they make contact by the phone to go onto a triage list? I would probably think that a lot of practices wouldn't be giving that there, but be saying to the patient, hold fire and we will contact you back shortly, rather than necessarily giving them that information at that point. Although feel free to tell me if I'm wrong there. I'm just going back to the top to see. It um, looks like people have been voting more on each other's question. Um, if a practice does not want patients ordering re repeat prescriptions um, via the screen, can a link be made to move them to the preferred method? So, for example, if you had another tool with which to organize repeat prescriptions, mm -hmm. um, I suppose technically that's possible. Um, I think, yeah. <laughs> but it, I suppose we'd, we'd rather everything came through one channel, um, which was our channel. But if the practice doesn't want to have that, there might be the possibility to sort of switch that off as an option um, in terms of the admin request that you offer, for example. Thank you. So I'm sorry, EG Pillars, I'm afraid I'm going to have to move on just because although I'm going to be locked in this building and I don't really plan on staying here that long. Um, I hope you've enjoyed that session. So this is looking at the Accurix um, presentation that they've got the live stream in terms of using their, um, their chain SMS product as well as their new planned product, which is the patient triage. So that's their version of online consultations. I think it's got some real potential there. Um, I can clearly understand that some people will feel that it doesn't do enough and that other people think it does more than it should do. Um, and it'll be interesting to see how that develops over time. I think there's definitely some tweaks and the, the guys have mentioned that themselves, that there's definitely some change they could consider making over time um, and particularly the customization stuff. But again, this has come from a company that has proven that they can iterate the versions that they've got. I, I like what I've seen. I've had a demo of the product um, earlier about two weeks ago um, and similar things have been shown and there's actually been a couple of improvements even in that time. So that's in a two week time frame, which is impressive. Um, would I use it? Definitely. Um, I've applied to use it for our practice. We'll see if we're able to do so on the pilot. Um, and that's partly because I want to see what the practice is like um, ad hoc. Clearly, there's potentially going to be cost and whether that cost is going to be um, effective for the practice. It would be interesting to see. Um, our area has signed up to PKB, patient that is best and alternative one, but we still haven't had our training in terms of dealing with that yet, or that's due to happen in due course. I think if this is something that you're interested in, I'm more than happy to keep trying to share these kind of things. And um, we've got some interesting content coming up in the next few weeks for you around this kind of stuff. So as well as looking at video consultations and tips to help you do that in the digital primary care sessions every Thursday at six o'clock for the next few weeks. Um, myself and Andy have got some interesting things for the obviously the TPP system on a Facebook user group conference that we've got on the 24th of July. And actually on the 29th of July, I've got a really interesting session that I will hopefully have all the details out to you shortly that looks at online consultation providers and their functionality. And there's a shout out to Accurix that you potentially may be joining us, hopefully. We will see. I don't know. We will find out. Um, I hope you've all found that really useful. If you've got any comments or questions, feel free to, as ever, contact me however you prefer, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, 
Yeah, I'm on all the platforms, as you all know. Definitely, if you've enjoyed this session, leave a comment, like, question, more than happy to deal with those. Next, we'll be going back to our kind of normal format of these kind of things, because as far as I'm aware, there's nobody else releasing anything at that time. But I will try and coordinate these with other people when that happens again. Um, Definite shout out to the Ecrix team. Thank you for that. I really enjoyed it. Found it useful to learn about the product. They're still going. I'm actually watching them on the other screen. I've got here to see what it's like and stuff. So they've clearly got a lot of questions and stuff. And if you do want to check that out, the link is somewhere on the feed and things. So have, feel free to have a look. In fact, just as we sign off, I'll pong that, ping that up for you. So there we go. Um, that's the link, YouTube slash watch TV, that kind of thing and stuff. So feel free to have a look at that if you want to join them. Or obviously go to their YouTube channel and check it out. As always, guys, feel free to contact me. And EGP Learning is here to help save you and your patient's time by tech enhancing your primary care and learning. And I will catch you in the next episode. See you later, team. Bye.